And today I'm going to show you how the proteolytic earthworm enzyme lumbrokinase stimulates nerve regeneration and is thus a dynamic option for neuronal repair, particularly for those with peripheral nervous system injuries, which are unfortunately a major cause of disability. And while instigating the regeneration of nerves probably isn't something you think of right away in relation to a proteolytic enzyme, with lumbrokinase this definitely makes sense because earthworms are well known for their regenerative abilities. But before I tell you how lumbrokinase stimulates nerve regeneration, let's first take a look at the peripheral nervous system and what happens during a peripheral nervous system injury. A peripheral nervous system injury is damage to the nerves branching out from the brain and spinal cord to the remainder of the body. And some practical examples of common peripheral nervous system injuries are carpal tunnel syndrome, where the median nerve in the wrist becomes compressed, causing numbness, tingling, and pain in the hand, sciatica, or even a severe peripheral nervous system injury, like brachial plexus injury, which happens when the nerves in the neck that normally control arm movement are severely damaged, often resulting from a high-impact collision or fall, and manifesting a significant weakness, numbness, pain in the arm and hand, and, obviously, considerably curtailed movement and use. Many of lumbrokinase's nerve-regenerating benefits actually stem from the earthworm enzyme's stimulation of and support for Schwann cells, which are peripheral nervous system glial cells that wrap around nerve fibers, or axons, forming the protective fatty layer known as the myelin sheath, which insulates the nerve and allows for efficient impulse transmission. You can think of Schwann cells like the protective wrapping around electrical wires, and the regeneration of injured nerves can't happen without them. And here's where lumbrokinase can help, because lumbrokinase dramatically promotes and regulates the expression of numerous factors like calcitonin gene-related peptide, or CGRP, interleukin-1, nerve growth factor, and platelet-derived growth factor. And each of these supports Schwann cell activity and, consequently, nerve regeneration. So let's get into that. Calcitonin gene-related peptide, or CGRP, draws Schwann cells towards the site of nerve injury, thus facilitating their migration to the damaged area, while also, like platelet-derived growth factor, stimulating angiogenesis, or blood vessel regeneration, thus delivering oxygen and nutrients to regenerating nerve tissue. Interleukin-1 enhances the production of nervous system factors, like nerve growth factor, that further supports axonal sprouting, elongation, and remyelination. Lumbrokinase also activates sirtuin-1, which itself plays a significant role in nerve regeneration through promoting axonal growth, preventing axonal degradation, and overall improving neuronal repair following injury, primarily through sirtuin-1 stimulation of mitochondrial biogenesis, or the growth and maintenance of new mitochondria. Lumbrokinase's activation of sirtuin-1 is also one way that the earthworm enzyme exerts its antioxidant effects, because sirtuin-1 enhances the activity of the antioxidant master regulator nuclear factor urethroid-2, or NRF-2, which accordingly protects against oxidative injury while enhancing neuronal survival and regrowth. Also, any mention of CGRP probably makes you think of its infamous role in migraine headaches, but activating CGRP, which is a potent vasodilator through regularly taking lumbrokinase, could be a better way to utilize CGRP's benefits, because CGRP's role in migraines is strongly linked to vascular inflammation, which lumbrokinase sharply reduces. Like all enzymes, lumbrokinase is not measured in milligrams, but rather units of potency. And for lumbrokinase, these units are known simply as lumbrokinase units, abbreviated as LKU, or even, like natokinase, fibrinolytic units. Also, remember to take your lumbrokinase on an empty stomach. So that means, ideally, at least two hours after a meal or one hour before. Thanks for watching. I'm Jason Carter, and I'll see you next time on Enzymental. Stay healthy.